A few months ago, I did a fact hunt episode on the top 5 offensive cheat codes. Not offensive cheats, but the actual code itself you used to enter. But while doing research for a possible follow up episode, by which I mean stealing your suggestions in the comments, I noticed a bizarre occurrence. A lot of you weren't suggesting offensive cheat codes, but offensive passcodes. The codes you used to enter into the password screen. Retro gaming's skinflint way of skimping on battery backup. Even more fascinating was it wasn't some crafty coder creating these crude keywords, but by absolute pure chance, they were rude words people had entered in for a laugh over the years, but miraculously bypassed the game's code, leading to all kinds of bizarre features. But, hello you! I'm Gurel Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Top 5 Offensive Passcodes. That's all exist purely by chance. Our first entry goes to Fact Hunt's first ever PC Engine inclusion, Devil's Crush for the TurboGrafx-16. Rather than being about a girl that Satan fancies, like the title implies, Devil's Crush is actually a pinball game, where you must defeat the Dark Lord's minions from hell by constantly ramming your balls of steel into their face. And I am deeply ashamed all I could muster up was a tired old testicle reference for a pinball game. Anyhow. Some genius developer at Naxat decided that a pinball game would work much better with a password system than the ability to save high scores, as that's exactly what they did. Though their bizarre decision does unintentionally allow us to discover our first offensive passcode. To get 68 balls and 497,438,600 points from the get go, simply enter in the code ASSHOLEFUCK. Since I've already used the obligatory testicle reference for this segment, I'll refrain from further vulgarity. But if this is the last place position, you can tell we're in for a much more shocking ride. <laughs> yup, the most talked about video game in history is our fourth position. And why not? When a monarch from an alternate dimension is regisnapped, who better to rescue her than a man who pulls clogged bits of shit out of a toilet with his bare hands for a living? Now I know what you're thinking, Mario 1 and 3 doesn't have a passcode system Larry. And well, yeah you're right. I'm actually cheating here and including a Game Genie code on this one. The magical cheat device that allows you to enter three codes, hence why it's called a Genie, into any NES system while encroaching the wrath of Nintendo's lawyers at the same time. Anyhow, all you need to do is enter the code GAYSUCK. Unfortunately, this code is a bit crap in all honesty, as all it does in Mario 1 is have a Wily Coyote-esque gravity delay if you run off an edge, and in Mario 3 all question mark blocks remain active, even if there's nothing inside them anymore. But if you're into inadvertently homophobic codes on patent infringing British developed cheat cartridges, then look no further. In Jurassic Park, a fantastic luck where there's dinosaurs and stuff. Oh, good old Jurassic Park games, eh? The exciting 90s video game adaptation where you hunt down more predators than Chris Hansen in the Vatican. Now, I don't know what it is about Jurassic Park games and their consistency of containing offensive material in its code, as this is actually the second time it's appeared on a Fact Hunt episode for that sole reason, and Sega's Mega Drive port has not one, but two offensive passcodes discovered by chance. The first brood passcode on our list lets you skip to level 8, simply by entering in ASSHOLE. Yeah alright, we've already had one ASSHOLE on our list, and I don't mean my obligatory Peter Molyneux reference each episode, so it won't count that one. But our true offensive code for this segment lets you skip to the final level by typing in CUNT PJ. Now I don't know who this PJ is, nor what they did to warrant such abuse. But entering this accusation also gives you the cryptic message of 
the raptors in the main hall have a bone to pick on you. Now how's that for a chaos theory? Hopefully you won't feel asleep with our next entry, as it's none other than the original Metal Gear for the NES. Solid Snake's legendary escapade of infiltrating a top secret base entirely staffed by people with absolutely zero concept of English grammar. So it's basically Facebook the video game. I'm not even going to mention the fact the NES version is such a half ass port, they forgot to put Metal Gear in Metal Gear. You just fight this giant toaster instead. Genius! However, all said and done, Metal Gear's password system is truly a work of wonderment, as rather than using programmer created codes to unlock progression, it essentially converts letters and numbers into binary codes, which in turn switch on and off areas, items, weapons and sequences. So it's essentially rudimentary programming. And by some unholy alignment of the planets, or just pure amazing chance, the placement of the letters F, U, C and K will always drop you right before the big boss fight near the end of the game, with various different items. For starters, we have Metal Gear's most well-known password, the infamous Fuck Me code, which leaves Snake armed with nothing more than a packet of cigarettes, essentially making the game impossible to progress any further. Secondly, we have the lesser known code of Fuck You OK Juan Carlo. OK, it's a little more convoluted, thanks to the additional consonants, but this code gives you missiles, grenades, a rocket launcher, and a ton of other items. But in terms of sheer aggressive offensiveness, second place must go to the motherfucking shithead 2. While giving you less weaponry than the Juan Carlo version, it does supply you with additional mines and more keycards, though as you're right near the end of the game, they're ultimately pointless. Needless to say, these codes only work with the original North American version of the game. By the time the European version was eventually released, the Fuck Me code was prevalent in American playgrounds. So a little known fact about Metal Gear was that it was solely responsible for all future European and US passworded games to drop vowels from their codes including Metal Gear's US release a year later. So you could say it led to a massive vowel movement. <laughs> I'll give it a go. Yeah, alright. Hardcore fans probably saw this coming a mile off mainly as it's the only famous code I've yet to mention. But I decided to put Metroid in the top slot simply because of the lesser known fact it's the first code I've ever seen that's so offensive it can literally damage your console's hardware. Now Metroid may be treated as the gingerhead stepchild on Nintendo properties in this day and age, being palmed off to third party developers to completely arse it up, but in the 8 and 16 bit days the Adventures of Samus was a strong part of the Holy Trilogy. The Adventures of a Bounty Huntress looking for space jellyfish was top priority for the must-buy lists of 80s Nintendo enthusiasts, and the fact Samus was revealed to be a the woman character yes, thank you, Andrew, was quite groundbreaking at the time. Except that's a load of old bollocks games journalists made up. If anyone was really that excited about Samus's reveal, it was more because you weren't playing as a bloody Rambo clone in an 80s console game for once. But thanks to Nintendo's tightness of not including battery backup in the western release, we instead have a passcode system that is gloriously open to abuse. <laughs> now like Metal Gear, Metroid's password system is more computer code than actual passwords. Each individual letter and number unlocks specific zones, weapons and passwords again. But unlike Metal Gear, it was quickly pieced together from the original Famicom Disk version, replacing its battery backup saving with a system that by total chance allows even more elaborate combinations of letters to create working codes. 
For instance, one of the most famous codes of all time was created when some kid called Justin Bailey decided to enter his own name into the password screen one day, and discovered that it not only unlocks the majority of the items in the game, but also placed Samus in a rather fetching purple leotard. There's the infamous Narpa Sword Code, that by total chance actually unlocks the debug mode of the game, with infinite health, weapons, etc. Though rumour has it that Narpa's sword is actually NAR password, with NAR meaning North American release. But since the code is exactly the same in a European version, it's debatable. But there's also lesser known codes discovered by people, such as Continue My Game Mini Boss, which gives you 200 missiles, 3 energy tanks, the majority of all the upgrades, and the gateway to Torian is open. Anime fans discovered entering Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z, would start you off in Norfair in Samus's Zero Suit. 152 missiles, 5 energy tanks, but only 30 units of energy. It's also the first code on this list that drastically affects the game's code, as there's no music in the game until Samus grabs a power up and the various suit isn't even in the game at all. And of course, this wouldn't be the internet unless someone tried entering various memes into the code over the years. And by pure luck, entering the legendary all your base phrase, someone set up us the bomb, gives you a zero suit Samus, six energy tanks, and 219 missiles. But even the most delicate of snowflakes wouldn't be triggered by these codes. Where's the offensive ones, Larry? Well, upon doing research for this segment, Aside from the obvious coming up, there's also another lesser known offensive passcode for Metroid in the form of Mother Brain? Fucking Toast. Which does indeed start you off with Mother Brain already dead. As well as starting you in the Zero Suit with 156 missiles, 5 energy tanks, and in Torian. So finally, without further ado, number one goes to the code everyone's been waiting for Engage Ridley. Motherfucker. Now compared to the previous entries in our list, it's pretty tame. But what lies behind it is truly fascinating. First of all, the game has you clocked in for 2,755,656 hours of game time. Which already sounds like a lot, but it actually equates to playing the game non-stop for 314 years. And ironically, you can't ever engage Ridley, as his Yoni boss has actually been defeated. But the game trying to keep track of your progress for over three centuries confuses the code so much, you not only start the game in a wall of graphical garbage, but also the game no longer scrolls and you can't turn into a morph ball. And depending on which version of the NES you have, it will not only crash your console to a black screen, but even completely fry the game's cartridge. Even worse, if you own the Virtual Console port for the 3DS, which is quite likely as Nintendo gave it away for free a few years ago, entering Engage Ridley Motherfucker into that version will completely brick the system. Thankfully updates to the system will merely leave it crashing your 3DS, but if you've never updated your system when you do this trick, you're gonna have a bad day. So there you have it. A passcode that's not only offensive to your human eyeballs, but also to your consoles themselves. In all my years, I've never seen such a simple phrase do so much damage. So, offend with caution. Oh, and there's also the code, Fuck You Ridley. What is it with the word fuck that unlocks so much stuff in these games? Hello you! Thanks ever so much for watching! Be sure to subscribe to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to make sure you're notified, and be sure to check out my other episodes. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon! But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Ta-ra for now!